हरे भगवान
this conscious space is revealed to me. That means I see my own home. Do you remember that story that I talked about? The father and two sons. Okay. So it has a very deeper meaning. Deeper meaning. The father is Krishna. And the son who left him is in the material space. Wandering from one species to another species to another species. And he is waiting. Who? Krishna is waiting when he will come back. Okay? And when you come back, he organizes a big celebration in the spiritual world. Do you follow that? So this So how do we attain this knowledge? So here Krishna is saying the process. Please repeat. Tarpiddhi prakatena Tarpiddhi prakatena Pariprasnena sevaya and render service unto him. The self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. Because they have seen the truth. Okay? Just like a person who is expert in mechanical engineering can impart mechanical engineering knowledge to you. Similarly, a person who is realized in spiritual science, will be able to impart you the same knowledge. Okay? <coughs> so let us, before I go uh, to that, let me just tell you how do we acquire material knowledge. Material knowledge we acquire by three methods. Whatever I see, hear, smell, eh? so this is called direct perception, protection, protection, using my material senses. Second is logical inference, anumana, anumana, pratyaksha anumana. Then third is Pramana, historical evidence, Pramana. So these three are the method by which we acquire knowledge. I want to show you why you cannot acquire the knowledge of the consciousness by these three methods. What is direct perception? Depends on the senses and mind. Your senses are limited. Eh? What is your name? Yes. Eh? Himansu. Himansu. And your name? Sudhendu. Now Himansu is holding a AK-47 rifle. You are not able to see. And it has to do. Do you follow what I am saying? That means our senses are so limited, I can't even see my pets for something. Eh? And then we say, using our senses, we will acquire all the knowledge on the earth. Eh? No, senses are also fallible. Isn't it? How do you know that fallible? How many of you have traveled in Rajasthan? Rajasthan. 
he will give the historical, he will narrate the historical events of that period in a negative way. Right? So, historical personalities, you know now, this is not the way to look, look at the, uh, the evidences recorded in the history. Then you will say archaeological excavations, carbon dating, and let us see some of the historical evidences. Akbar ruled India 1556 to 1605. Nobody will, you know, counteract this statement. Britishers ruled India for 200 years. Chanakya founded Maurya dynasty in 322 BC. Human civilization started some 40,000 years ago, but this 40,000 years ago is based on what? Some kind of excavations, sometimes the carbon dating, but it is inconclusive. It's not right. I'll tell you why. Before I go, let us first understand what is the relative knowledge and what is absolute knowledge. You see, when we studied in our school book, standard 5, 6, 7, incident light, the angle, incident angle, and the reflection angle of this is equal. Right? So that is right travels in straight line. And then angle of incidence is angle of reflection. Now you see, you should read quantum electrodynamics. It says the right follows all possible paths. This is quantum theory. Right? So for what? So this we can now. This has been rejected. This has been. So this is called relative knowledge. And when based on our own speculation, when I develop the knowledge, this knowledge is going to change every time. I hope I have another, oh, I don't have this, another figure about the same light. So the idea is, the relative knowledge, this always changes. It is not fixed. Same thing, same light. <coughs> We thought to be right, or we are taught to be right, now it is no more right. Okay? So it's like Newton's idea of big, big object they attract each other is no more right. With Einstein's space time perfection. Is that clear to everybody? But neither you can prove that nor you can prove this. You cannot prove factually Einstein's space-time curvature or that of the big, big objects, they get attracted to each other. Is that clear to everybody? But what is absolute knowledge? Absolute knowledge is that that never changes. Okay? So, some of the knowledge I am the Atman, I am spirit soul. I am indestructible, I am eternal, I am full of knowledge, bliss. This knowledge will never change. Or Krishna is absolute truth, it is not going to change. Or there is a conscious space and there is material space. Material space is the reflection of the perverted reflection of the conscious space. This knowledge will not change. This is called absolute knowledge. Okay? <clears throat> now let us see. This is a very you know, potent bomb sir, argument by our divine grace. His divine grace, Silla Prabhupada. How do you know who is your father? I was born 
as God. Huh? And that simple answer. How do you know who is your father? You know your father, right? Yeah. But how do you know? How do you know that he is your father? I saw him. Eh? I saw him first. From the birth. birth. You have seen so many things. From the birth itself. No. I mean, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. If my mother says, your mother told you. Okay, I got the answer very fast today. But normally, I have gone almost all the cycles to finish this. Okay. Simple answer, but we are not able to give answer. Why? Because we have become very complicated by our modern education. Modern education has made us so complicated. When my brother died in 94, at the age of 24 he died. So I went home from my journey. And after seeing my parents, I was staying with them for some days. Then my father's colleague organized a Bhagavad Gita lecture for me in a nearby school. School called Bethany School. And I went there, the headmaster made around 300 students sit in a big hall. So I asked the same question, how do you know who is your father? Simultaneously, everybody together. My mother said, who is my father? Why? That they were not polluted. They were not complicated by the modern education system. Such a straightforward question could not be answered. You know, it's not you. I have seen everywhere. People are more educated. You ask them simple question, they are not able to answer. Well, there is no way. Your mother only knows who is your father. Who is that? There is no other way. And then somebody, you know, I tell him, he has to, no, 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 I, I know my father by DNA. I said, have you done it? No, I have not done it, I do now. <laughs> that means you also don't have a father. And then that fellow, you know, actually ran. When I said that you don't have a father, he soon, he fled that place. When, how much we can hide? Face the truth, my dear friends. How long we should be hiding? Now you do a DNA test. What kind of reasons? So you certainly cannot know through direct perception, can you know? Then he is my father. Logical inference? No. Historical evidence? So, Baba Kyaraya, what is left? That means even the relative truth in this world cannot be assigned or certain by these three methods. And we are talking about the conscious plane. No, 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 I don't know God by myself. There are so many people who are speaking like that. Am I not right? Eh? I am forgetting your name. Artists, artists, artists. Artists, am I right or wrong? Eh? There are many people that say, I know God by myself. Really, you cannot know your father by yourself. How can you know God by yourself? Eh? You get it? What is your name? Dilip. Dilip, are you able to follow? Eh? Am I telling right or wrong? Right? And see? Eh? Everybody says, I don't know. Some people will say, Oh, I will read. I will first learn Sanskrit. Then I will read Shastra. And then I will know. Ask yourself. You know the answer. 
Jafaran yang ke Jafaran yang ke mana? Similarly, the transcendental knowledge of conscious space. Jafaran is Bhagavad Gita. Jafaran is Veda. Veda means that which is to be known. Bid. Bid means to know. Veda means the body of knowledge. That is, body of knowledge about the consciousness. So, Veda is the authority. Veda is my mother. Bhagavad Gita is my mother. Do you follow now? Eh? So, epistemology and the way of life. You see that? Now epistemology what? Direct perception, logical inference and, and historical evidence. That is epistemology. And there are so many agnostic rationalists. They say only through these three process I will accept. Otherwise I will not accept. Just now we saw, we have life is not based on that. You cannot accept your father based on this three. Are we not talking nonsense? When you want to be a rationalist? Eh? Now let us say another rationalist. Now people are saying you are simply chemicals. Okay, so that is what people are saying. And how much? Come here, come here. Come here. Yes? What is the weight? Aja, it's 60 kilo. So if I assume Newton is right, he's a mass of 60 kilo. So I can treat him as a mass and equal to 50 kilo. Are you ready for that? Eh? Are you ready for that? Eh? He is saying no. What still you are saying? I am a rationalist. Forget about that. Now come to the next one. Is 60 kilo, out of 60 kilo, almost 55 kilo is water. So what is left? 5 kilo. And at 5 kilo you will find some portion of nitrogen, carbon and what not, calcium. Eh? Like that. Right? So, will you ever worry if I destroy 5 kilo of uh, chemicals? And eh? every day, every household, they waste more than 50 kilos, 50 liters of water. Am I right or not? Eh? So, nobody is crying, right? So, now I AK-47 and I do... <laughs> is it not bad? And none of you should cry out. And none of you should also run. Okay? So you, what I am trying to explain to you, the contradictory, the way we live, and the so-called epistemology, based on which we are, we are forced to accept things, they are contradictory to each other. You understand what I am saying? Please go. This is very interesting. There is a cement bank. <coughs> you know, many countries they have established some cement banks. Eh? That means Nobel laureates, big big fellows, they take their cement and preserve it. Eh? And according to science, if you conceive a baby using the cement, that should be more potent. According to science. Yes or no? Eh? So will you ever tell your wife, go and bring the cement from there and get a baby? How many of you will do that? Raise your hand, why? Of course you are not married, but my friend is married there, Adis. Oh, Adis, will you say that? Eh? Let me take cement, eh? You will motivate your wife. Eh? See?
That means we are not walking the talk. In our present way of education, we don't walk the talk. We are talking something and acting something else. So how they think it is? Why the present society is more dishonest? And particularly why Indian people become very dishonest? Because 50 years back, Indian people were fully dedicated to many principles. Very honest. You must see the historical records of British Empire. They will describe the Indian society. In fact, they were in awe and reverence for the Indian society. And how come in 100 years our society became the, the greatest, <coughs> the worst, the most bad? Because of this contradiction. Our people could not figure out this year that way. Because an, an education pattern was thrust upon us that rejected Veda, that rejected Bhagavad Gita, that rejected everything that we took pride. And we are given some form of knowledge that in itself is contradictory. You can't live your life like that. Uh, yes. Is that clear to everybody? Eh? I will focus again because this is very important. This is very important. You know, we are not blindly following Bhagavad Gita. I can tell you, since you know, I have started, I started chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra 1989. I started reading Bhagavad Gita 1988. Okay, and I came in touch with Ishka in 1993, February. And I can tell you through all this journey, my life has become holistic. That means whatever I read here, I follow my life apart. I can't say I'm perfect, but there is honesty in following what is there. Right? Then there is satisfaction of day. You are not duplicate today. You are not dishonest dis dis today. Do you understand what I am saying? Is that clear? So with that, we will stop. There are a lot of things here. Any question people have? Do you understand what is the epistemology? Do you understand what is epistemology? Hmm? Epistemology is the modern way of acquiring knowledge. Okay? And the way of life, the way you conduct your life. Right? And I show you very simple examples where these two are very contradictory to each other. Okay? And why I am saying there is a method, there is a purpose. Eh? Okay. Question. Yes. Then, uh, million, million, um, millions, millions and millions of tales. So each tale is also alive. So that is each tale also contains a soul. We have millions and millions of tales. Body cell. No, no, no. <clears throat> there, are also, uh, there, are also there are bacteria within this body. That is different. Okay. Bacteria are different. Cell doesn't have so. It is also alive. Eh? It is also alive. It is alive means soul is there. <coughs> So lives is dead. I said, uh, any cell can uh, eat by itself. Cell cannot, you, you cannot preserve a cell. Say for example, if you give the cell, it detached from the body, it's gone. It's gone. But the uh, uh, cement tank, they are storing in liquid. No, 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 no. I don't understand, I don't understand. It is possible 
that is, you know, see what is so, try to understand, there are living beings. First to define what is a living being. You as a whole is a living being. Like worms are inside your body, they are eating your internal part of the intestine, creating lot of problems. Right? Because of that, the pain that is inflicted to your body, that you experience. The worms inside the body, they don't experience, they are enjoying. They are in a different body. So it is possible. In fact, there are many, many external agents they are living in our body. Why body? You know, they are, uh, you know, well, well, and this big, big. So you see that uh, they eat this place, big, 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 big fish they eat, right? So there will be flesh there. And to eat that flesh, sticking to their teeth, there will be other small, small living beings. Okay? So that is different. My point is that you first of all define the body in terms of unitarity of consciousness. Your consciousness pervades your body. Your consciousness does not pervade the body which is inside your body. We follow. There is a one inside your body. You are not conscious of that body. Like suppose uh, you eat a gentle tablet, gentle tablet, gentle tablet, gentle. You eat it, all the worms are dead. You do not feel that they are crying. Do you understand? You are not conscious of their body. You try to understand this point that their perception and telling. He is conscious of his body. He is conscious of his body. I am conscious of my body, but I am not conscious of your body. You are not conscious of this body. The soul is defined by the unitarity of the consciousness. Is that clear? Yes. Next. Yes. Abhish. We are in the world. Yes. That is direct perception. 
Everybody see you. You are coming from her home. How? Oh. Oh. How do you know she was <laughs> You you are perceived before you are you are yes, you are conceived before you are before you are born. You cannot know your father. No. You are being mature. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> eh? Think about it over. <laughs> eh? This is simple common sense. Eh? Yes. You have question? Okay. So tomorrow is Friday and you have to start on tomorrow? Yeah. Why not tomorrow? Tomorrow is the start. Okay? If you have Prashara, then we can complete and then you have Prashara to begin. Right? So tomorrow we will have Prashara. And, uh, okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Eh? No, send, send.